guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ultimate Rush by Purple Wizard. In Ultimate Rush you play two to six players, it takes about 20 minutes to play, it's for ages eight and up. And Ultimate Rush is basically a dexterity game in which you're going to try and build a tableau of four cards. You're going to be getting power and or coins that will allow you to fight monsters and gain things from town, thusly gaining victory points. Every time you go about a round you're going to be selecting your uh, initiative based on how fast you can build your tableau you'll gain any bonuses and then you'll have the opportunity to fight a monster you can fight a monster that's already shown or from the top of the deck at a cost of double the damage you're always going to take damage when you fight monsters but if you have enough power you'll be able to defeat them and gain some kind of victory point bonus sometimes you'll get set bonuses and other times you're just going to get simply health and or experience as well as energy and energy can be transformed into certain things on your board on your turn depending on how much you have after four rounds if you have the most victory points and manage to not die three times you can win the game ultimate rush okay let's go down below i'll show you what you get in the game and then how to play the game afterwards our review so here we have ultimate rush and everything included in the game and as you can see you're gonna get six player boards enough health markers and energy markers to state depending on the number of players where they go and they go from zero to 15 if you hit zero you die 15 is the highest you can go for health and seven is the highest you can go for energy depending on the number of players whether you be two players three four or five or even six is where you're going to place your health marker so to six player game everybody's set up correctly here and uh, then you're going to go ahead and put it in front of you everybody is also going to get four of these starting cards and they're going to have two gold symbols and two uh these fighting symbols here so i can go ahead and give four of these to this player and four to this player and we'll simply be showing you a two player variant of the game however the more players you add the more the game becomes a little bit uh more competitive and of course dexterous because this in essence is a dexterity game also, depending on the number of players, how many of these you keep, the rest of them you will remove from the game. So if you're playing a four player game, you put four of these out, but in a two player, we're just gonna be using these two. Additionally, you have these decks, whether it be the town deck or the fighting deck, and depending on the number of players is how many you're going to flip over from the top of the shuffled decks, two for a two player game, three for a three, so on and so forth as well. Here we go. These are two that you can purchase and the cost is the top right hand corner. And this is what you're going to get, whether it be a shield or three energy. And this one is one energy and three health. And then, of course, the victory points at the end of the game that you're going to add up in your discard pile after the fourth round. These are bosses or, or minions that you're going to be fighting, and they're going to have a amount that you're going to need in order to defeat them. And then they're going to give you damage based on whether or not you kill them. Additionally, down here below in the middle bottom is going to be what you're going to gain, whether it be energy, whether it be the ability to draw a card from the top of the, uh, the shop deck, or if it can give you some other stuff. Uh, let's see what else it can give you. There's these symbols over here that are like equipment symbols that will be helping you as well, gaining victory points throughout the game. After that, you're going to then move off anything else that you don't need in the game and you'll begin the first round. The first round is pretty simple. You're going to start here on the first round tracker and you'll go all the way down these four rounds and everybody is going to try to make a tableau of cards. Let's go ahead and give this guy a little bit more room. So, for instance, this player here, you're going to say, ready, set, go, and they're going to start making a square. Now, you don't have to make a square. You can kind of make anything you want, but you want to try and align them so that way you're going to get certain resources. So in this case, you could do this if you wanted to, and that will give you one of these purple, two of these purple, and then one of these coins. But, of course, putting them down in a four by uh, two by two is going to be better. This will actually net you three of the purple and one gold. And after you finish doing this, then you're going to say, I'm done, and you're going to go ahead and take one of these. Now, you usually want to take the one that is in front because it'll give you the fast first person to choose. Uh, the, you know, you'll be able to get your turn order. So this is the first player, and this is the second. So if he says, okay, I'm done, he'll get this one. And then the next player will have as much time as they want to construct their tableau. Uh, of course, you're all doing it at the same time, but you're going to then be able to take this one here. So if he did his and this guy put together his, let's go ahead and just do that really quick here. Why not, right? Uh, then he will be able to select his second one and he'll place it here. Then everybody's going to gather the bonuses that they get. This player gets one HP and we're playing a two player game. So these guys go down to here. Uh, this guy gets one HP and this guy is going to get two of these coins to buy stuff with, which is pretty useful. This player will go first and he has one coin to buy stuff. So he'll, can, he can actually go ahead and buy this, which is going to give him one energy when he buys it. 
uh, and it'll give him three health. But because he's not going first, this player is going to go first. And so he is, uh, oh yeah, sorry, no, he actually is going first. He has the one coin, so he can then buy this. Yeah, so he's actually gonna gain three hearts and one energy and then zero bonus points for the end of the game. After that, he can choose between these two bad guys to fight. He has three uh, uh, of these purple symbols and this guy requires four. So if he fought this guy, he'd take two damage, but he wouldn't defeat him. Uh, if he fought this guy, he would have enough because he has three and this guy requires one. So he would actually be able to defeat this guy and gain the bonus. And he's going to go ahead and do that as opposed to this. Now, he could also choose to fight the top of the deck. If he does that, he'll take double damage, but he'll also have to have one of these purple symbols to even do that. So he'll go ahead and fight this guy here. He's got the three symbols, so he defeats that. He takes three damage and he also gains two energy. And he's going to have two victory points at the end of the game and it'll go in his discard pile, which is important. That's what he wants at the end of the game to have the most so he can win the game. And of course, after that, he's done and you'll only buy one thing and fight one monster. Then the next player will get a chance to go and he has one currency plus two more, which is three, which is not enough to buy this card. So then he moves to fighting. He's got three symbols for fighting and uh, this guy here requires four, unfortunately, but he can spend one energy to give himself one of these purple symbols, thusly defeating this guy. He's gonna take two damage, however, and then he's gonna get a special bonus, which is one of these cards here. Uh, and then he's gonna put this guy in his discard pile. Now this here is actually a card that you can trade off with one of your other cards if you want, and he'll do that because this is just a better card in general. These cards will give you multiple purple symbols and multiple coins when you attach them in your tableau. And that is basically a round of play. Everybody will do that. The next round will go on and you'll continue playing that. You're gonna replace out all of these cards here depending on the number of players. And then you're going to simply say one, two, three, go. And you're gonna place these out again from your hand and collect all of the uh, bonuses that you get as well as going through the shops and going through the fighting of the monsters. If you ever go to zero, you're going to go ahead and restart and you're going to flip over one of your tokens. After you reflip, if you die again, you flip again. And if you die for a third time, you're out of the game. Additionally, there are monsters like this one here that are bosses. And I had already shown you one of these things, which is basically a card you can use as one of the four cards for your tableau during the dexterity portion of the game. There's also these things you can choose between the two different options. There's these guys here that this guy says you don't have to fight the boss if you don't want to if he's out on the field, as well as you can gain uh, two purple. And they all do different things. There's a bunch of different things you can gather as well as different things you can add to your tableau. Some of them will let you fight more than one monster so on and so forth. And after you've gone through all four rounds of play, whoever has the most points wins. Now, in addition to the points you're gonna have either on your discard pile, which is, there's, he's got two points here, but you can also gain points from your tableau cards. For instance, this one is gonna give you one point. Additionally, if you have sets of armor based on the bottom areas of these cards, certain monsters are gonna have certain set bonuses, like this one here is going to have a plate mail. If he had a plate mail and a wand, that means he has two, so he gets two points. And if he had three, four, or five, it'll give it, score him five, eight, or 12. In each set will be different if you have multiples of the same type of card. These down here represent, if you don't die, you'll gain three victory points at the end of the game. If you died once, you gain nothing. If you died twice, you lose five points. And if you die three times, you're out of the game. Out of the points, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, Ultimate Rush. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. So a couple caveats before we begin with my review. And the one thing is on the board here, it illustrates what you're going to get based on spending energy on your turn. The first one is if you spend one, you can get a heart, you can gain one of your attacks, or you can gain a gold, which will allow you to buy certain things and then for two you'll gain three health and then for three it has this crazy little blue swirly thing and that thing says it does damage to uh, people around you so it, this one says you can do three damage to people which is pretty useful throughout the game if you can defeat people even though they have more points than you they're out of the game and you can win that way additionally the first initiative token is going to score you one heart and the second will score you one coin not two coins it, it just said two there so it got me a little uh, I guess messed up. The third one is gonna get you one attack. The fourth is gonna get you an energy and then five and six will actually net you uh, two. So a heart and an energy and two energy. So picking the last initiatives can be beneficial, specifically when it comes to monsters. And there's three basic types. You have red, green, and orange based on their difficulty and what they contribute to when you defeat them. And black, black, you normally have to fight. They're bosses. There's other cards in the game that can allow you to skip them, but when a boss is out, you must fight it and they'll just generally give you something that is usually pretty good. 
If you don't want to fight a boss, when you finish making your little four, four by uh, two by two square, you can choose to grab a different initiative token so you don't have to go first. Sometimes going first is better, sometimes second, or even last can be best, depending on what you want. Although, whenever somebody buys something, it doesn't refill until the end of the round. So you're gonna be stuck with less choices at the end, which will make you kind of want to pull sooner. The more players in the game, the more options there are going first. Additionally, these are your normal ones. You're gonna get four of each, uh, four total of these guys, but in the shop deck over here, there is going to be things like this, which will net you bonus victory points at the end of the game. And it will additionally net you, some of them are gonna give you bonuses to when you attach them. So for instance, you attach this one to, let's say, I'll, I'll do this one here. If you attach this one to this one, so that's that one right here. That one's actually worth three, uh, two value. So that's pretty useful. And this is just worth one as opposed to them. So they can give you more as you attach them together, allowing you to fight better, <laughs> to deal with the monsters a little easier. Dying in this game is not very likely, but it can happen, especially if you're going to go and risk, uh, risk trying to pull monsters. The first round of the first game I played, I actually died the first time, but you had to die three times in order to be out of the game. So it's easy to die, but it's hard to be removed from the game in this one. Um, it can happen nevertheless, and players can mess with you as they're buying different things in the game. Okay, so what do I think about the game? First of all, it's a dexterity game, and it is mean. It can be a little punishing as well. You always take damage when fighting monsters, so you have to be careful of when you want to fight and who you want to fight and what the turn order is. Going fast is important in this game, but moreover, what's more important is choosing the correct turn for the order of the game. You want to make sure that you're able to defeat the monsters in the order that you would like to pull from the initiative stack. These things here is very, very important. Additionally, buying certain cards is going to net you either more points or less depending on what you get, but also it's going to help you throughout the rounds of the game. So there's a lot of cards that are going to be in this game, but not a lot that you're going to use, which means there's going to be a lot of replayability. And of course, the two aspects is A, management of how you want to formulate the pieces, as well as B, choosing the correct things to fight and things to buy that will net you bonus victory points and things to use throughout the game. Trying to die, uh, trying not to die is very, very important as well. So it has a lot of strategy. I really enjoyed that about the game. Uh, it, it, it's a lot of fun. It, just specifically on gameplay alone, I had a good amount of fun in this game. Certain players are going to be a little more peeved off and want to stay away from games like this because it can be so dramatically uh, damaging and like there's all this stuff that goes on. It's, a lot, it's very, very cutthroat, uh, although it seems very kitty in nature. And it, it is. It's got a lot of cute, cute artwork. I really do like the artwork of this game. I like the feel of it. I like how very, very simple it is to explain and to play. There comes a lot of tough choices and quick moments where you start to realize how how to play the game and as you play you get better and better with this game not only that but this game has got the four rounds so it's very very quick style of play once you've gone through the first round you'll get the game and then after that you got three more rounds to make up for your choices that you made previously if you didn't make any good ones and you're always going to want to net certain cards above others depending on the round of play there's bosses that you're going to want to maybe choose to not have to deal with or maybe you want to you can be a fighter you can be somebody who gathers coins all of the shop cards are going to give you certain benefits that allow you to either fight multiple times times, gathering energy, etc, etc. And that's basically the idea of the game. I really, really enjoyed this game. If you're a player who likes dexterity card games that have a little bit of management and a little bit of a puzzle feel to it, you're going to dig Ultimate Rush as well. The quality of the prototype, which this is, and may have some changes to it after the campaign is done, is really good. And it feels like a fully public produced game. Although, of course, you know, some of these guys are kind of like, uh, I don't know if it's like stickered on or whatever, but it looks good. And I'm expecting the final prototype, the final copy to the game to be really good. Overall, had a lovely time with Ultimate Rush. There's definitely an audience for this game. For those of you who are a little bit of a more competitive dexterity type people, it's not cooperative. But if you like that, dig it. Check it down below, Ultimate Rush, and let me know what you think as to whether you might want to pick up this game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as taking a look at Ultimate Rush down below in the description for your viewing pleasure for you dexterous, mm, aggressive players out there, as well as our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away two games right now with the Giveaway Geek and with uh, Blake from... Uh, what is it? Oh, everythingboardgames.com, both of them. Also, don't forget to check out our live streams every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST, as well as this week, if you're watching this early, on Thursday, we'll be doing a special Breaking Games live stream showing you the dwellings of Eldervale. Uh, ever...
Eldervale, yeah. Uh, an excellent uh, little game that I've gotten to play, and now will be the first time on live stream to check it out, so definitely go ahead and do that. All right, guys, that's all I got. And as always, I look forward to rushing with you next time. <laughs>